federal wildlife conservation stretches back to 1871, when Congress created the U.S. Fish Commission to study the decrease in the nation's food fishes. State wildlife conservation goes back even farther to the 1848 establishment of the first game laws in New York State. By 1880, every state had enacted game laws. Today, state wildlife agencies nationwide have grown into a force with a combined budget of 5.6 billion and nearly 50,000 employees, including 11,000 wildlife biologists. In all, they manage more than 465 million acres of land and 168 million acres of water. Federal conservation work has continued to grow as well. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service alone employs about 7,500 people at facilities across the country. Passage of the Endangered Species Act in 1973 sought to further wildlife conservation with its twin goals, prevent species extinction and recover species to the point where the protection of the act is not necessary. The process of recovering a species can be arduous. The Hawaiian monk seal population, for example, has been in a decline since the 1950s due to food limitation, shark predation, and infectious disease. That decline has not been reversed since it was listed in 1976 as endangered under the ESA, but recent years have seen the decline slowed. In all, more than 2,300 species have been listed as threatened or endangered since 1973, while only 10 have gone extinct, about 1.5%, less than three dozen, of those species have been taken off the lists. Some that have been delisted, for example the bald eagle and American peregrine falcon, continue to receive protection under federal law. The low rate for delisting species can result from challenges out of the control of those seeking to conserve them. In some cases, species that have recovered have not been delisted because of litigation, as illustrated by the gray wolf. The Fish and Wildlife Service introduced gray wolves into the greater Yellowstone area during the 1990s. The nearly 400 wolves roaming Wyoming today exceed recovery goals and have for more than a dozen years. However, numerous lawsuits since 2004 have delayed a delisting. In the most recent case, the delisting was vacated by a court, even though the judge would not dispute the Fish and Wildlife Service's conclusion that the wolf population had recovered. In 2015, Fish and Wildlife decided not to list the greater sage grass after an historic collaboration by 11 western states to conserve the bird. But land management plans issued by federal agencies in connection with that decision have resulted in several lawsuits in the west. Fish and Wildlife recently proposed to delist the grizzly bear in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Should the service issue a final delisting rule, however, litigation challenging the service's decision is likely. How can the ESA evolve from a listing mechanism to a mechanism that can help prevent listings? And once a listing does occur, how can the Act better enable recovery of the species so that the protections of the ESA are no longer necessary? Enter the Western Governors Species Conservation and Endangered Species Act initiative of Western Governors Association Chairman and Wyoming Governor Matt Mead. In the past year, the initiative has created a mechanism for states to share best practices in species management, promoted the role of states in species conservation efforts, and explored how to improve the efficiency of the Endangered Species Act. Workshops held in Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, and Hawaii have allowed stakeholders representing the entire ESA spectrum to engage in a robust, productive conversation. Webinars, videos, and email updates have reached thousands of additional thought leaders across the country. The initiative has enabled WGA to compile a vast array of information and expertise on improving species conservation efforts and ESA implementation. This knowledge is represented in one or more of the following overarching themes discovered over the past year. Incentivizing proactive voluntary conservation. What is the best way to employ this key tool to preempt the need to list species in the first place. The role of state and local governments in species conservation and ESA implementation. How can state data, science, analysis, and manpower be better leveraged? Landscape level conservation and ecosystem management. How do we ensure the merit of these efforts, then fund and implement them most effectively? Investment in science and measurable outcomes. 
How can the best available science be utilized to reinforce ESA decision making? Listing, recovery, and delisting process of the ESA. Close evaluation of each of these steps clarifies how the ESA now works and how it should work. Law and policy recommendations. Workshop and webinar participants analyzed the role of litigation and explored ways to improve implementation and effectiveness of the Act. Armed with this knowledge, Western Governors will now begin the work of leading a policy discussion on the national level to improve the efficiency of the Endangered Species Act. The ultimate goal of the Western Governors, enable the Endangered Species Act to work better for wildlife and for people.